Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz, and welcome back to uh, Satisfactory. Where we've gotten our nuclear power online, and then decided to move on to plutonium power. But due to a critical flaw in my calculations, the entire factory has to be completely reworked. But we've been making a thousand plus nuclear waste, and if we can't turn it into plutonium, all it does is stack up and irradiate the world. And even better, the supermassive waste storage bin is completely full. And now we have almost a million nuclear waste just sitting around. And now we're stuck with it forever because we can't delete it and fix it does not waste. So, what do we do? Well, first, of course, remember to leave a like. Helps me out a ton. And then next is, do we reload an old save or just start a new world? Like, dude, I don't know. We can't get rid of a million nuclear waste. And our processing isn't gonna be ready for hours and hours and hours. I'm gonna run out of the iodine filters and then we're, we're just gonna die. So, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. Oh wait, there is a little tiny bit of hope. I don't think we can get rid of the nuclear waste entirely and get it into plutonium, but we might be able to get to some kind of middle ground. Because in the blender here, we can make the fertile uranium. So this makes the nuclear waste into non-fissile uranium, which is far less radioactive. So we can kind of still operate in this biome and not run out of filters. But since for every 25 waste, you get 100 non-fissile uranium, we'll have four times as much of this, so it's gonna be a bit of a storage thing. But honestly, we just don't have another option. So then let's get out there and build ourselves a waste processing building. So step one, finding a place for the emergency facility. Well, we want it close to everything, but we also want it kind of far away. And I think the beach way over this way will be perfect. This is a nice little cave entrance into a quartz cave, but also it's nice and flat and near a lot of our infrastructure. So we're gonna be building something over here with the help of Yul Smart Mod. And again, our goal is to make all of the uranium into non-fissile uranium. So we're gonna have to store all of it but also, I realized after building our nuclear power plant, was that building our nuclear waste storage area in the middle of everything was probably not a very good idea. So over here as well, we're gonna wanna have excess nuclear waste storage too, and plutonium waste storage for in the future. But back to the present here, we have many issues. Uh, number one, to get everything kind of rocking and rolling, we're gonna need all the items for the non-fissile stuff which is going to be the uranium waste. Well, that's not gonna be a problem. Uranium, nitric acid, and sulfuric acid. Well, good thing is, we're already making pretty much everything. So we just need some levers and pulleys to redirect stuff there. And half items will be super easy. We just use smart splitters. So like the main items will go through the front and then through the right, we can have this set to overflow. So any excess uranium or nuclear waste will go over to the emergency system. And then we can pretty much do the same thing with pipes as well. So the sulfuric acid and the nitric acid will obviously want to go to its main production line, right? Well, we need to split it up with just a normal junction cross. And we want part of it to go over to the emergency place. Cool. Nothing too crazy. Problem is, when we have an emergency going down, we don't want any material going to main production. We want it all to go to the emergency. So we build ourselves a valve on the main production line. Emergency happens, cool. We flip the valve, everything goes to emergency. We're very happy. But then, when we have this open, what should happen is the emergency area will fill up with material, and then once it all backs up to here, everything will just go this way. So it's pretty much just an overflow system. But now where to put everything? And over here, you know, we could do things, but it's already kind of busy busy. You know what's not busy busy? This area with all the useless batteries. Why don't we just get rid of them? And we just have another wall back here. Easy. So nitric acid there, sulfuric acid there. Switch in the middle for plutonium production. So yeah, we still need a switch for the other emergency setup, but we'll get that soon. We'll just build that right next door here. Easy. And we will literally make up a reason to have a switch there because my goodness one will be there. That's how it will be. So this is vertical now though. So up top is where all the acid's coming in. Then like I was saying, it splits. So it will go to the emergency and to normal production. When an emergency happens, we just shut down normal production. 
and the emergency system takes over. Of course, we'll have to power that down, power other stuff on, da 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 da. Not complicated at all, simplest solution I've ever built in my life. So that gives us all the pieces to solve our horrific nuclear waste problem. So let's begin. Number one, give me my freaking hover pack. I missed it. I missed it so much. Oh my gosh, I love this thing. Okay, but yeah, couple things. We needed a huge storage area or excess materials for when we want to switch this thing on. Well, I really like industrial fluid buffers. They look great. So we're gonna have them right up front and center over here and stack them way up. Yeah, that's like almost 10,000 fluids. I think that will be enough. We'll have another one right here. Sulfuric acid, nitric acid. Then we need storage for both the uranium and the nuclear waste. So what I'm thinking here is I don't know if we'll be able to process the million nuclear waste we have, but at least I want to test everything out and try and drain all of the belts that are around the nuclear setup. So we can kind of work back in our nuclear area and do stuff. Also, pretty much whatever we do, we are not going to be getting through a million nuclear waste anytime soon. So we're using this recipe. It uses 25 waste per minute. Even fully overclocked, it's not even 100, or maybe just so. This one, 37.5, but we're not gonna use the silica, so we're not doing that. Yeah, this nuclear waste is gonna be a problem for a very, very long time. So let's start by blocking in this area, and this will be where organization and temporary storage is. So for the nuclear waste, we definitely want about three storage containers here. Each storage container holds 24,000 nuclear waste, so that's pretty good. And then for the uranium, we'll need another bin for that. Maybe a large bin like that, maybe a smaller bin. I don't know. A lot of organization is still up in the cards, but generally speaking, uranium goes to there. GG easy. Nuclear waste now. You see there are the two belts here because at the end of the day, if there's an emergency, we're making 1,125 nuclear waste per minute. And I don't know if we're gonna have the same rate of nuclear waste on both lines. So we'll quickly build a little load balancer for them. Yeah, let's just quickly build a quick two to two load balancer. No big deal, right? Yeah, pfft. <laughs> yeah, belt spaghetti everywhere. They're not that difficult though. Like you just take one line, you split it in two. Uh, half of it goes to one merger. The other half goes to another. The other line does the exact, exact same thing and off they go. Uh, the uranium now is gonna come over that way to that bin. And then over here, I had a genius idea. Genius idea with smart splitters. So what usually happens in an emergency is you don't realize it's happening till it's too late, right? <laughs> yes. So what I've done is I made a safety stop for the waste. So using these smart splitters, the waste is first gonna go into like the blender system and fill that up whenever that happens. And then once I realize, hey, there's kind of a problem happening, I can come back over here and I can switch this so the center output could be any as well. And that way, if all of the uh, nuclear power plants and stuff are turned off, uh, we can use all of this extra storage here to actually store the waste that's in our way. So super good plan. Moving on to the blenders then and the actual processing in here. We will build literally as many as we can. I don't think we're gonna build that many, maybe like 10. And also we won't be overclocking as well because in an emergency situation where our <laughs> nuclear power is down, we probably won't have power. So we'll just have to rely on some normal blenders. And if we have about 10 of them, that will take up about 250 nuclear waste per minute, which is not bad. That's like half a stack of waste per minute. Oh my gosh though, I just realized a huge problem. The water, we're making 40 water per machine. Oh no, 40 times, that's 400 extra water per minute, what? Oh, oh no. It's times like this, I really wish there was like a fluid awesome sink, so you could just put fluids in the awesome sink and then easy, GG, done. Like we could just move this thing over a little bit and put the fluid intake right there, it would be fine, it'd be fine. Why not? <laughs> okay, I'm distracting myself from the real problem. How do we deal with all the extra water? Well. We can technically put it in the awesome sink. Uh, we'd have to package it. Not a good time. It wastes plastic. Yeah, 60 plastic per minute. Oh my gosh, and we have to make the canisters as well? Bruh, that, that's the worst, dude. That's the worst. Oh, the solution was right there. Concrete, 
Concrete! Oh, thank heavens for concrete! Well, just- Oh, dude. Dude! Dude! Dude, this is actually genius. Straight up genius. If you ever have excess water, all you gotta do is make wet concrete. This is an alternate recipe that takes limestone and water to make more concrete. Oh yeah, whoever wants more concrete, it's never a big deal. But that's, that's not the reason for the recipe. The reason for the recipe is to get rid of excess water. That is actually so smart. You know what? I bet the devs planned that even. That is so smart. Oh my gosh. And we have the concrete node like right over there. We have another one up over that way. Oh, dude. Dude. So we bring the limestone over, we plug in the water, and then we just sink the concrete. Oh my gosh. That is like a Hail Mary save. That is so good. That's <laughs> so good. Okay. Awesome. And all we have to do then is belt this all together and we'll build another floor and maybe build a couple refineries over here. No lie though, S tier alternate recipe now. Like actually, as I was piping and belting all this stuff, like dude, that's all I was thinking about is where else to use that recipe. Like it, it opens up so many options. So freaking smart. So freaking smart. So this is all piped, belted, looking good, looking fancy. Got that Crete from the hill over there or limestone, whatever dude. And brought it up to some refineries that are on this new floor. And vibe wise, I just wanted to have the refineries outside because they look cool, of course. And also, I made a couple bridges here on the ceiling so we can deal with all the concrete and bring it to an awesome sink when we need to. And now the only thing we need to do is build some storage, build a couple batteries, and we might finally be able to dig ourselves out of this horrific mess. So got the vibe of the inside, a couple batteries charging on the roof, and of course, our storage. For now. Add in a couple walls and we are done. That's it. Our emergency system is ready to go. So now we save the world. So let's figure out exactly what we're dealing with here. And see how much nuclear waste there really is stored up. I assumed it was, oh my gosh, something like a million. I never really counted yet, but I'm sure at least there's a hundred thousand on all these belts. Like these belts go for a while, my dude. It's crazy like my freaking driving skills. And then at the waste bins here, each bin has 24,000, we have 30 bins. 24,000 times 30 is 720,000 nuclear waste. So all in, we probably have around 800,000 nuclear waste in the world. Yep, that's a, that's a huge problem. Again, we can only handle about 250 of that per minute. So I think like this big chunk of nuclear waste will have to just be put somewhere else for the time being. Actually, fun fact, if we did try and process all of it, 720,000, just the bins divided by, what is it? 250 per minute is 288 minutes and 288 minutes divided by hours is 48 hours to process all of this nuclear waste here, at least with our emergency setup. So yeah, that's <laughs> not gonna happen, my dude. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of this. We're gonna get rid of that. We're just gonna keep some of the nuclear waste off in a bin over here. Make a special extra one. And we're going to put this kind of in a temporary place. Can we? Not, okay, fine, fine. There you go. Oh, that's why I didn't want to happen and it's gone. Lost to the void of bins. Okay, but temporary place is gonna be all the way just over here. I got a plan actually. I got a really good plan. But first, let me show you an awesome trick to move massive amounts of material. So what you want to do is at your destination, you're just going to want to build like a tiny little personal storage box. Just build that bad boy right there. Next, fill up your inventory so there are no more inventory slots for stuff to go. Then go to your big storage area and start highlighting all of your bins. And once everything's highlighted, do not delete things yet. Leave it all highlighted in there and go back to that storage box you made earlier. Then once you're there, look at the small storage box, add that to your delete list, and then delete everything. And what's gonna happen is you get the gray storage box. Because your inventory was full, the items had to go somewhere, they're not just gonna explode out into space, and everything ends up in here. Yes, the million nuclear waste just was teleported to this one little box. So that just saves us a bunch of trips and a million filters on moving it all. 
So that's pretty cool. And you can do that with pretty much everything as well. So it's pretty fun. Now we just build a couple bins ourselves here for our own inventory and we start moving everything to its new temporary home. No, 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 no! <laughs> the filters! I didn't, I moved all the filters. <laughs> right next to a million nuclear waste. Uh, but you get the idea, right? Back to it though. Yeah, you kind of stand by the infinite storage bin there and just keep dumping it into the other storage area and eventually you're good to go. So technically speaking, we could have just taken this stuff anywhere, but I have a plan. We're going to bring all this nuclear waste back to our factory and process it into plutonium. So once we get everything figured out, we'll have the nuclear reactors stay offline but have our plutonium set up online and we'll just feed this nuclear waste into that system for however long necessary. And our main system should be able to handle over a thousand nuclear waste per minute, so they'll get rid of that stuff in an amount of time, but you know, <laughs> we get something out of it and it's not like 50 hours. But now with that all out of the way finally, let's get to our emergency procedures and saving our world. So everything has been running up until this point, but now it is time for meltdown procedures. Let's start by sinking all of the nuclear material we can. Next, we turn fuel production off. So we stop bringing in radioactive material. Then of course, we turn emergency processing on, or at least we would, but it's connected to our main grid right now. We turn plutonium processing off, at least for now. And then you still have to figure out what to do with this one. With the pipes, we'd redirect everything to back up and go to the emergency systems as well. So this would go to zero, and all of it would back up, go to the emergency place, same with our nitric acid here. And then, given enough time, things would clear out. Well, things are already starting to clear out, which is great. What's left to do though is we still have to direct all of this nuclear waste back to the emergency factory now along with some uranium, because the alternate recipe we're using uses uranium to make the non-fissile stuff. And because of that, I've hooked up these two drones here to our main battery grid and power grid, so they'll keep running in an emergency too. They bring in a ton of spice rocks for us, and they will allow us to run our emergency system just fine. But with all the nuclear waste bins moved, I think we are ready to go. Send it off to where it needs to go. I've made a belt path for the nuclear waste to go all the way to the emergency system. All that needs to be done is one simple little belt connection and our problems will flow away forever. Back across our nuclear setup, up the cliffs and over the way where it will all run down into our emergency setup and immediately clog up because we don't have the storage ready. So all we do is we flip this to any, that to any, and all the nuclear waste is get to store up into these bins where it will wait to get processed. And only a short time later, and all the nuclear waste is stored away. Gone, trapped inside here forever. Leaving the main factory clear so that we can finally rebuild and complete our nuclear power plant. But still, we're not out of the woods yet. The 750,000 nuclear waste is still kind of just sitting here. But we're in a much better place than we were at the beginning of this episode. But anyway, it's going to take a while for all this to process. So we're going to end it off here for now. And next time, we'll start to deal with the other problem we're creating. Still though, hope you guys enjoyed and thank you for watching. But have a fantastic rest of your day, and bye bye